Welcome to this Zentangle Quickie. My name is Heather Hartwick Gladden. I'm a certified Zentangle teacher. And today we're going to take a look at the tangle Fiboro from Melanie Kafer. I hope I pronounced all that right. Okay, so this, this is, an, this is a neat tangle. It starts off with a grid of orbs. And... I'm going, to st I'm going to start right in the center. Now, it's an off, I call it an offset grid. And here's how I, here, uh, this is how I handle it. So I'm going to do, yeah, I'm going to do a, a nine orbs to start off with. And that's why I started in the center. So that way I can kind of get the center. And then I'm spacing these out as best I can. And so what I do with th these, what I call offset grids, is, well, first it's kind of like, okay, let's look and see, is there a bigger grid? Yes. Then, you know, it, it, just to kind of, I, I don't want to say an analyze the grid. Analyze the grid is, is a good word. Um, but it seems like most of them are like this, where there's a larger grid that would be straight, easy to do. Leave enough space so that way then you can come back and do the offset part, which is just, you know, putting one in the center. Like so. I I share this because I run into, um, well, it, issues sort of. I just kind of like going, oh, it's one of those. And I pass it off. And I, then I'm like, oh, I don't, oh, there's plenty of tangles. I don't need to look at that one. But sometimes they're just really neat looking. And then also... Why not just give everything a try? All right, so that is my solution to the problem. Next step is we're going to draw some straight lines. And I think I'm going to take this one off of the paper. So we're going to make this a complete monotangle. Um, in, the, in my step out, and then I think in Melanie's just a little bit, I did this grid of nine, but I didn't take, I didn't extend it all the way out until the end. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure that, you know, you see uh, how to do it. And then here's how it looks full. So what I'm doing is outside of, I'm kind of connecting the, the orbs, but I'm just doing one side at a time. And then we'll turn. And we'll do the other side. So we're, we're doing diagonals. And that, that's the only way that we're connecting them. Now, this is where I always find uh, my grid making skills. But let me tell you this. Don't worry about it. Just connect. Just go diagonal. And don't worry about that. Oh, well, this isn't a nice line. Just It's pretty forgiving. So don't worry about it. I kind of find it more important to just make a nice straight line from the center of the orb to the center of the other orb. And then also know if your orbs ended up a little wonky, you can always um, fill them in afterwards. I mean, you could fill them in at any point that you like. And of course, after the fact, I'm like, well, gosh, if I fill that one in. Well, and here's the thought. If you're looking and you come up with something, you know, like this one is just really off. Um, I, mean, I can't worry about it now. But, you you know, maybe, oh, let me fill it in. If it, Maybe it was the orb was too small or something. And then it's like, oh, well, then I could uh, adjust it. It could be a course correct. Okay. Next. We're going to, you know, pick whichever direction that you want to go. And honestly, I don't know that it it matters uh, and well say unless and if you look at Melanie's grid hers are more elongated so you know again it just this is just gonna be a you get to, to decide so we're gonna just do straight lines not not going all the way to the end this is maybe oh, I don't know more than I don't know three quarters of the way something like that just coming just shy of the other orb. So starting at starting at one, 
coming just shy of the other. And then if you go off of the page like this, eh, you just estimate. Where would that orb be? Yeah, maybe a little further. And some of these are just right off the page. Okay. Okay. Then, we're going to do some more diagonals. And you don't know, let me start in the middle where they are complete. So we're going to do three diagonals. It kind of makes it look, you can think of it two ways. It either can look kind of like a feather or uh, a fish skeleton. <laughs> either one. Um, so I'm just kind of auraing this line and then this. And what I found interesting is if I try to keep this same distance from this line, you know, while I'm orienting this, it makes them, it makes them kind of smaller on purpose. So like these, this distance, the ends are at the same or similar distance, you know, from, from this line. Because I, when I was first trying it, oops, I forgot this line right here. When I was first trying it, it I was, I don't know why I was having the, what seemed like a hard time with that and then I just focused in on this and it's like okay let's just keep these the same distance don't look at anything else and it was fine and that's why I share that that's why I share everything because I you know I, I the longer I do this the more people I meet that have kind of similar tangle hang-ups as I do and so that's why I share different things that I come across because it might be helpful <laughs> and that is my entire aim Ooh, let's okay I'm gonna deal with those partials afterwards and what's nice about this tangle is that the steps are easy. It has a neat result at the end. It is forgiving. As you can see, there's my, you know, my one weird one. And it's like, when it's all done, we'll look and uh, you might notice it, but it just, do it doesn't really matter. And I'm leaving a little bit of a tail off of, you know, and so I'm not going right to the end with these. And then we'll share some shading idea. And it, this is, well, as I'm doing this, you can decide if you want to fill in these orbs or not. It depends on what you're going for. I kind of like them filled in. I, I did that on um, the last box in my step out. And, and I, kind, I kind of rather like that. It, it adds some contrast that I think is, you know, kind of needed. Uh, let's do this first. All right, so for these partials, sometimes I'll do what seems easier first. So like these ones, it's like, oh, well, I know how, I'm, how I've been spacing these. So I'm going to space them the same. And they're just running right off the, uh, the paper. Hence, you know, so I have this blotting uh, piece of cardstock here so I can run off the page. And, uh, and well, and then also, so that way the, because um, what's underneath it is uh, like a glass top. I wouldn't want it, it would be too shiny. So you just have to imagine what, you know, if I was drawing the whole thing, what would be here? This is also why I w usually wait till to do these last because you can then look at what's already done and that helps in figuring out what you need to do. And it's close to as if you were drawing the whole thing as possible. I just think it makes it super effective. And you know, like you like you cut this piece out of something that was already drawn. Okay, so this I'm gonna work a little bit backwards. Yeah, that's that that makes sense. Okay. Oops, one last one. 
here we go. All right. So like I said, I kind of like the idea of filling these in. And I'm going to leave my little bit of shine there. Just like I said, I put a little orb within the orb. I try to do it bigger than I think. So that way, if I end up going over it or if I need to adjust, then it's already there. And as I mentioned before, if you need to you know, uh, reshape any of your orbs when you fill them in, it's the perfect opportunity to do that. And sometimes, well, not sometimes, a lot of times when I'm figuring out how do I want to decorate or shade, you know, to put the finishing touches on a tangle, the first thing that I look at is, well, what what the, what do I want to adjust first? And then that will sometimes guide the rest of it. Because then I just decided, well, can I fix it with a fill-in? Can I fix it with just shading? Or do I have to result, re, uh, just uh, do a good old Bronx cheer in there? <laughs> And if you don't know what that is, uh, I do have a video on it. It is the ultimate in course correction. And it's a cute tangle. All right. So now for some shading. Let's. I really like how this looked on my step out. And when I do the, the step outs, they're just on regular paper. And so it's nice to see what it looks like on an actual tile. So I'm just putting some graphite. Just down this little center line that we did. Oh, and these ones I'm just gonna, well, I might end up using just what's left on my tortillon for those. Just ten of those. Put a little bit of graphite and then we'll see. I'll, I'll save it on these ones down here. All right, then I put, I just spread out the graphite just a little bit with some circular motion or just, you know, some up and down motion, either way, up to you. Do take a look at the, um, for more inspiration link in the description section that will link you to Tangle Patterns where this is housed. Uh, she has a couple variations on there, give you some good ideas. Okay, oops. <laughs> I'm not going in any order, so then hence I miss some. And I suppose you could go down the um, the grid lines instead if you wanted to. That could be kind of neat. But I thought that this had a neat, little bit neat look. And I'm, I'm, I'm spreading it out just a little bit more in that base. Just because. So I like to call this playtime because this is when we play with the shading. But yeah, I just think that has a neat look. Again, she had some other variations like uh, doing it up this way, but uh, not having the, I think she didn't have the line all the way through. She had the line and then, then, um, then some of the little angled pieces. But do take a look. It gives you some, some great ideas. But, you know, what a nice fill-in slash grid tangle and um, just really really neat really neat I think in the one variation she just did like a like dot a little space line dot space line um, and that looked kind of neat as well so again do take a look it's, it's in the description section which if you look at the uh, if you find the title of the video uh, to the right of that there should be a down arrow or or something or if you're looking at it on a desktop or laptop it might start uh, usually I start out the description with uh, the originator of the tangle who it was created by so you'll see that and it'll say show more and then you click that and you'll get the description below the links to uh, the step outs are ways to connect with me if you wish if you en enjoy my my style and my explanations would love to have you join us online I do classes nearly twice a week a lot of them are free and I do have uh, two two per month that have a, 
a, a fee with it so that way I can continue to do um, to do everything so I uh, would love to have you join us sometime and let's see if you like the video would love to have a thumbs up or a like feel free to share it and if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel would love to have you be a subscriber of course that is free and you know uh, also I haven't mentioned it in a while and if you happen to be following daily or this is your first one I sometimes I you know, I, I try not to add everything in um, you know the end like this uh, you know kind of try to mix things up just a tad but just a note I do post daily and sometimes I, I I'll, I'll have more than one video that I post in a day because I have class replays that um, that I like to to post so all of the you know the free content is out there so you might see more than one in a day check the notification bell uh, I don't know what it defaults at but just check it if you don't like to have your phone or your email blown up uh, just make sure to check it appropriately so that way uh, it's not annoying <laughs> Because I know I don't like those pop-ups, hence why I mentioned it. Because um, I just turn everything off and I go when I want to go uh, to see videos and that's how I do it. So I just want to mention that because I would hate to have it be defaulted and you're like, gosh, that Heather, she's always posting. Oh, so annoying. All right, I'm going to unsubscribe from her. <laughs> I would hate to have that happen. So that's why I mention it. All right, with that, thanks so much for watching and I wish you happy tangling.